the morning before going into the yard, we are taking the van off. Again. For servicing. But third time. And the lower end. Then we have to undo the hydraulic fitting, which is a potentially messy business. Or not, as the case may be. See, I think that's one of our problems. I think we've got air in there. Let's put a bag over this. Okay, baby. <laughs> it's off. Now, will that fit in the bloody car? I'm really not sure it will. Dropping off the van. Back to Stan's again. Back to Uncle Stan. Leave it there, he said. It is safe. Let's see if it's there tomorrow. Walking through Catamaran Marina to look at boats. Nice and to assess varnish color. Early morning. Ungodly hours for us. 7 a.m. Work begins again. Haul out for a hull job for a varnish job, for a fridge job, and lots of other jobs that Glenn will probably think of. And it's raining. There she goes again. marks of touching the bottom in Bermuda. Prop looks good. We had a bit of a discussion here. The yard was saying we weigh 37 tons when we know we actually weigh only 30. Turns out they were speaking US tons, we were speaking metric tons. So we are good to go. Slings weren't even off and the job on stripping off the hull started already. The stripping paint is applied and scraping in progress. Progressing nicely. Propeller is taped off. Nobody is touching it. Late afternoon. Progressing nicely. We have our cockpit tent up. It's nice and cool. And it's a lovely evening light in the yard about as nice as it gets it's time to strip the varnish off it comes off really well on the top it's almost a shame to take it off it's such a good coat but got to but on the edge here it's a different story see on the top it just peels off it's like clean wood underneath and this edge is really difficult it's going to take quite a while Day two in the yard. Last night we stripped off the entire length of colon on this side. We started after sunset, finished at midnight. It came off quite easily. What didn't come off easy are the leftovers of silicone where we've had the rubbing strips. We'll have to sand this off. Here we already sanded it. It looks very nice to be continued today. I feel like crying when I see it like this. And there is the captain. Yeah, I'm crying too. Unfortunately, it had to come off. Masking off in progress. Doesn't look like too much fun. If I don't fall off the boat with this, it'll be amazing. On the hull stripping, we have two people working today. Almost half done on this side and nearly finished on this side. In the fridge compartment, the day of truth, we are going to drill holes through the hole. 
da, 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 and something I don't particularly enjoy doing, but it has to be done. The current fridge coolers are there in the sink drains and when we are at anchor, all they do is heat the water and not cool the fridges. And we are changing them with these ones, which should be better. This is the new, one of the three new keel coolers from Frigaboat, which we are going to fit. We're going to drill the holes for them. Measure twice, drill once. Should be good. This is where they will be positioned. Hello. Oh. Oh, I can see right up one of the skirt in the galley. Cool, I like that hole. That's the thickness of the hull. Not very. Not very thick. Testing, testing. Okay, if that wasn't enough to sink up, let's drill two more. Second. The third and the last one. That should sink it. Three holes like that. Oh, sweetie, just because we don't have varnished gunnels doesn't mean we have to sink her now. Here we do, we're gonna scuttle her because she's got no varnish. Scuttle. Quite the jungle in here. There will be lots of connections to redo. Back on the deck. On the no brainer jobs. So good for varnishing, huh? With the adequate bit of acrobatics. You fall off the boat doing this, it'll be a miracle. Second evening of epilating the gunnel. Stripping this colon off the decks is actually it's like taking food wrapping off well, on the middle bit. Where it's gripping to the edge, it's not so good. Cool, huh? Meanwhile, down here, poor old Craig is still stripping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still stripping, you know. I'm not sure what's bluer, the boat or Craig. <laughs> the harvest is on the deck. Nearly finished this side also, but mosquitoes are chasing us away. Too much to put up with. This concludes our deck jobs for the evening. Day three in the yard. Looks like we are going to be here for a few more days. Fridges will be finished on Monday. Today it's Thursday. And we are tossing about the gunnel. Not sure we should varnish again or not. Aesthetically, we definitely should. Maintenance wise, hmm. Do we really want to varnish every six months? This morning again to hire help to scrape off the anti-fouling. And on this other side, a third person started sanding. Good thing we've covered this one, huh? While it's hot outside, frustration time in the engine room. All these fittings we put together before, they're all leaking. This magic gump they told us to put on is all useless. They all need to come undone again to reseal. It doesn't even dry like I mean, it's just, it's just wet. I'm going back to the tried and tested method of good old Teflon tape. All these fancy products that leak. That's one of them done. Nearly done again. If they leak after this, Glenn said he'll just put a bucket under it. All back together again, testing for leaks. And it better not leak, because I've used the tried and tested Teflon tape this time, which I'm sure will be just fine. Yeah, if it doesn't, I'm just gonna knock them out with the sledgehammer and be done with it. Parasailer just got delivered. Brilliant, thank you. No problem. Thanks. That should make you happier.
lifting it on the back. This is the spinnaker on the deck and this is the hatch it needs to go through. What do you think? Will it fit? It reminds me of that book called Will It Fit by Betty Won't. It is rather large. Sheets look good. Nice perm buckles in the end, Gib. Yeah, definitely hard to use. Down the hole. Gonna need a good airing. A very good airing. We can't fly it in the yard, so we ventilate it on the deck. Afternoon. Hired help left for the day. Starboard side is sanded. Yep, hide help's gone, leaving the non-hide help to do the tricky bits, like under the keel. Oof, what a job. Epoxy time again, to fill the scratches from when we touched button in Bermuda. The worst bit was here, we got this. Lovely sunset light. I've got to make sure it's really smooth because uh, the propellers and what's going on, right? What are you doing? It's night. I'm trying the water line to see if I can get it through. I'm a little peer pressure in the morning. Day four in the yard. Tired help continues sanding. And Glenn resumes on the bow thruster tunnel. Gotta get some epoxy inside where it's gone down, it's actually gone down to the glass fiber here, so I wanna get some epoxy in just to replace it, seal it up. Heavy rain last night, raining again now. trying to persuade us that he, he could fit these while we're in the water. Someone could drill from the inside and they just quickly put it in. That's all three backing plates now done. And very neatly too. I'm very pleased how they've done that. It's like it's going to be very strong. Midday, port side is finished also. And the captain starts sanding underneath the kill bulb. The epoxy filler from yesterday's evening. Time to start pulling out these plugs that were put in really badly and hardly had any varnish on them before. I'm going to renew them and revarnish them. Let's try to push them in without damaging the wood around. line sanding is finished also. Now it needs wiping with acetone and masking again. What you doing? Acetone. She is beautifying. You see, when it comes to beautification, she loves it. Look, look at that line. That is the best line this boat's had since new. Huh? Probably. <laughs> Getting there looks fabulous, doesn't it? Almost finished this side. We can hardly see even to pour the acetone now. So this side will be finished in the morning. Day 5, Saturday, 9 a.m. Glenn started very early. He finished sanding along the water line. All done. Masked it all off, ready for Interprotect. You always got to do the last 10% of the job whenever you get yard people, unfortunately. Finishing touches on sanding the rudder. But time for Cloudy Bay. And the captain, probably. All the dust needs to come off. 
Okay, Mother Hubbard. Here we go. The hull is all cleaned, washed, ready for the Interprotect. Early afternoon, first coating of Interprotect started. The smell of fresh paint, wonderful. Grey anti-fouling could look quite nice if we can get one where it doesn't go that horrible colour on the waterline after a few months. Recreational activities for the afternoon. Chopping board didn't really work split just a cheap chopping board i guess so we're going for proper plywood this is to go either side the anchor when we have our bow ladder it holds the anchor straight first coating of interprotect is done Touch up where the roller didn't fit. Not letting her Jesse have all the fun. We have some nice teak, care of a nice business in Harrington. Thank you, Ray. We're making some plugs for our handrails. Well, these are three test ones. They look like they're going to fit just fine. A little bit of epoxy around there. The colour looks good. So his advice was just to um, put a bit of varnish in and bang them in with a hammer. Yet more sanding. Probably going a bit over the top here. They have to look nice, don't they? Mm. Well, everything has to look nice. Including you. Evening already. Mosquitoes are out. This concludes today's jobs. Cleaning plan is the last job to do. Then we go out to eat. Like civilised people. Solid as a rock. Perfect. Day six in the yard, Sunday, yet more sanding. This is going to be the smoothest bow tube tunnel ever, or at least in this yard in Antigua. Epoxy coating. Second coating of Interprotect in progress. Epoxy on the anchor wedges. Seal it all up. Midday, anti-fouling job started. First coat of anti-fouling finished. Not exactly happy with how it was applied. It is rather stripy. So we brought in somebody else for the job. Who are you and what have you done to my husband? <laughs> I've become a yard worker. Thought we'd better bring in the professionals. Change of plans. Second coating of anti-fouling. It's um, in-house applied. See if we can get it on a bit more evenly. I actually have some paint left. Rather than that, he's using. Unfortunately, the professionals can't take out the zebra stripes from the previous damn coke. Oh, feels so good to see her painted. This is real progress to see the anti-fouling on. We are nearly done. Hmm, I really like it. Beautiful light this evening. Finishing off the third coat along the waterline with the head torch. I am anti-fouled. You won't find any barnacles on me. Even kept the mozzies away. And that one is going to take off from me very gently. Please. <laughs> A little bit of makeup removal is needed. Day seven in the yard. Today we finish the kill coolers or the fridges. Mm -hmm. We've got to take all these fittings off from the old kill coolers to braise them onto the new ones. The film's more has gone down to do the first two, and I'm volunteering to undo the rest. After this, Glenn will become a fridge specialist also. I better. Brazing in progress. Thank 
Clear? Successful. Yeah. Kill coolers coming in. Kill coolers fitted on the outside, waiting to dry. This is the best moment of any painting job. Well, assuming you do have a nice line. Look at that. Look at that. Back to the original waterline. Gives me great pleasure to see that. Do I need to circle the entire boat? See if you can keep up with me. I work really fast. Six dollars a mask and tape. Seven dollars a mask and tape. Eight dollars a mask and tape. Nine dollars a mask and tape. Ten dollars a mask and tape. Wunderbar. Look at that. What do we have there? I'll just roll, can you just roll this back up again so we can reuse it? Oh, you'll, have mess, so... oh you'll have so much paint on your hands now. I'll just take it off like this. Same as you have on your face again. No, not again. Yes. This is how it should have been in Harrington. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Fine, is amazing. Bow thruster nearly finished. Are you going to install the fridges yourself? Yeah, I think so. Or at least run the wires where I want them to run. Need to come round and up there. Yeah? We can we can bend the whole thing like this. Right, bend up like that. Oh, that, 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 that complicates things a bit more. We have to bleed the hoses each time we come. Oh, okay. Using our new gauge. That film was good as an adapter. Look. Go straight down to your. This is what it leaks a little bit, so. Hang okay. on. It's a little low, so I press it up. And then we turn on the unit. Okay. One thing to do while the boat's out of the water shut all the seacocks. Put some grease on them, a shiny ball, and then work them backwards and forwards a few times. Get them all nice and working properly. With my special device here. Easy access. Oh, that one's easy. And that is just ridiculous access. Oh, I have an emergency with these. It's not cocked with you. The cockpit tent bar needs reshaping. We'll take it to the workshop once more. This step ladder on and off of it, 100 times a day. It's marvelous, isn't it? You love it. We were supposed to launch today. We got postponed for Wednesday morning and out of frustration... If we can't launch the boat, we're going to launch the spinnaker. Enough of boat works, let's have some fun. Spinnaker in the yard.
happy? Yeah, very. Day nine. Back to nice jobs, varnish work. Interesting little workshop you have here. I'm trying to get the dust off the boat, but without sitting in the gravel. And at the same time, I'm getting a suntan on my back, which probably isn't a good idea. Recreational activity of the morning. Putting the plugs in on the handrails with a touch of epoxy. They are not coming out. Got to go in enough, so I don't have to sand too much, but make sure I don't knock them in too far. Tent bar return. Nicely arched here on the top. The tent should sit much better now. Travel lift is here to lift us in the slings and finish painting the patches that were under the stands. Cloudy Bay will remain in the slings overnight and the travel lift crew is now debating how they install the slings. We shall have a pair each side and not much space to put them. With a moving cloudy bay, the acrobatics on the step ladder could be even more interesting. A few minutes later, chemical strip on the patches. Finishing the patches that were under the sands. We have nine of these to do. Nine? Yeah, for each side plus oh. the bow. This should be the finishing touches. Three coats of Interprotect, two coats of anti-fouling, and we are definitely ready. To bed. Last coat's going on the pads, I can't be bothered to stop and do it again at midnight. Finishing works in the dark, as usual. Like a good head torch. Day 9 in the yard, 7am, we finished everything. All the patches are down and we're ready to launch. And while I was doing Cloudy's bottom, I thought I'd do the bottom of my sunglasses, and my glasses too, what do you think? If that wasn't enough, before I did that, I put these ones in Interprotect. Inter Got grey, so I've got a grey pair and an anti foul pair. Nothing's going to grow on them. propeller shaft. Okay, this one's free. We'll see how that goes. Start the engine, right? At long last, we are in the water. the marina wonderful and upgraded to a much smaller step ladder de-rusting the dinghy straps 
Glendy Rusty the swim ladder. While taking it apart, he dropped a piece in the water. Three dives later, we still couldn't find it. Did you find it? <coughs> no. The parasailer sheets. The sheets are very good, but the fittings are uh, rather rusty. Completely seized. Must be sitting in salt water for a few years. We give them a nice WD-40 bus. It's got them moving now. Next job, spray top cleaning. It desperately needs it. We've had the fridges working all day. They seem to be just fine. It is now safe to tidy up all the pipes. How are you doing? Not perfect, but fairly neat. It's sort of like organized chaos. Well, my opinion is, as a newly trained fridge technician, everything's perfect. Pressures are good, lines are good, nothing's freezing out, nothing's too hot, and the fridges are actually working. Let's seal it up. This morning's activity, one that I have been waiting for, is boom lights. We are going to replace the old spotlights with an LED strip. We are going to have a lot of light. I hope so. Let's go in. Okay, that's the last one. And then we have to put it all together. A little bit of good old Vaseline. Eh? Make sure it all seals. Then we plug it in. Let's just see if it works first. May I have the honours of turning on the Christmas lights? Go ahead. Three, two, one. Ta -da! Look at that. Long awaited LEDs. Lots of light. Thank you, Empire Bus. Thank you, Home Depot. Thank you, One Year of Wait Wanna. Back under the water heater again, this is the pipe which gets fed from the engine's hot water to heat the water. It keeps leaking and I just cannot get a spanner to it, so I'm trying to work out how on earth I put it in without having a spanner. I used some gump before they got from the plumbers, but it didn't work. So I'm going to try and get a spanner in there somehow again. Another redo job. You haven't got a spanner, you've got to make one. My new spanner. This is a test run on the easy to get to one. It seems to do it up, all right? Gym for the evening. I don't know why I need my glasses on. I can't, can't even see what I'm doing under here. It's just by feel. Working your one abs. Six of a turn each time. But the spanner is working. Okay, all sealed up again, hopefully, with my new do-it-yourself spanner, we won't get any more leaks under here. Let's see, I'm not holding my breath. LEDs light at night. Uh, we now have a surgery room in the cockpit, but I'm not going to admit out loud that maybe I overdone it. Driving across the island again, this time we managed to find a better car, not a rent wreck with clean seats. And we will go to pick up the van, which hasn't been serviced. And we're driving very carefully this time, avoiding punctures and these huge potholes. Picking up the van. Will it fit in the car? Just. This bang spends more time off the boat than it does on the boat. I really don't think it likes cloudy. It seems to have got an allergic reaction. It's going to put it back on again. The forepick needs to accommodate the parasailer now. This is our old asymmetric. We need somehow to fold it smaller so that the parasailer actually fits in the cabin. Unsuccessful folding on the deck. It's now out on the jetty and Glenn is making himself a little nap. I'm too skinny, I need a really large 
to take the air out. Not sure if we packed it smaller, but it will have to do. That is definitely better. Moment of truth. We try fitting it through the hatch for the first time. Well done. Fit. <laughs> Will it come out like that is another matter. It's definitely more compact than that. the reservoir for the vang in the backstay and we've been advised to change the oil there might be a reason why our vang's leaking and inside this tub is actually quite a lot of caca in the bottom so we're going to try to work out how to get it clean without emptying hydraulic oil all over the place which is horrible stuff while glenn is pumping this is where it comes out this black yakista is what we drained of the reservoir. Glenn just loves hydraulic oil. Mm, especially when it gets on your skin and your hands, it's really nice. Flashing back the backstay. You see the level going down? You see this? It's instantly hard, right? I mean, this is... It's a little like this on the bank. There's no air in this backstay. You see a fountain in there, no? Okay. For this particular job, Glenn is rather happy with the surgery lights that we have installed here in the boom. For this ambience, it's just fine. So I'm going to suck all this out now into the van. So we're just going to put the van back on and then pump some of this cleaner oil through into the piston and then let it flush back. Hopefully any dirty oil inside the piston should flush all the way back. So one, if you could go and very gently pump. We're just going to pump enough to, for now so that the oil comes out and then I'll screw it on. Just make sure there's no air in there. Well there's air in the piston for sure but make sure there's no air in the pipe. Okay now I'm going to pump. Just tell me if this moves here. Mm -hmm. okay. We've pumped it to the maximum and now letting it out. All the oil should pump out now. Same exercise on the back stay, blending it a couple of times. Make sure all the dirty oil is out. We repeated the flushing process twice. Clean the reservoir. Now it's time for the new clean hydraulic oil to go in. Job finished. We can close the pot now. Lit back on for another day. Trouble. Day fridge stopped working. We must have a leak. Back under the floorboards. We found the leak. It's one of the weldings. Fillmore needs to come back. Tidy cockpit. And bath time for Cloudy Bay. Clean off all the yard dust. Next morning, we wake up to a very clean and civilized cockpit again. Cushions are out. Pleasure to have breakfast like this. Just welded the day fridge again, filling with gas. It's okay. not, you want me to turn it on? Yeah, I'll do quickly, check. Hmm? Oh, I never turn it on, check again. Rewelded the pipe, testing the gas pressure. Hopefully, this time it won't leak again. We do need all our fridges. Fridges are working again, well, sort of. Time to go shopping and fill them up. What you get for five, six hundred dollars in Antigua? Six hundred dollars! 
enough of boat works and being in a marina we are taking down the overboom sunshade switching to cruising mode meaning beaming up and we'll move in an anchorage to actually feel like we are on vacation but before we put it up some polishing is in order beaming up nearly ready to go that's a sign that summer's returned going to 6-9 Good afternoon. Yeah, we're ready to uh, slip our lines and uh, leave the marina. If you could uh, have someone on the jetty and on our uh, stones on the pole, please. 